I'm Martin Steinecker, an assistant professor at the Seoul National University in South Korea. And today I'm going to talk about MM62 Profile Profile, a fast and ultra-sensitive method to find remote homologies beyond the twilight zone. Um, I'm very happy that I have the chance to present that work. This is still work in progress, um, and I'm happy to present it to you the, for the first time. In metagenomics, we try to study the uncultivatable microbes. So in comparison to normal genomics, where we take a bacteria, we clone it in the lab and wait, then extract the DNA and sequence them. In metagenomics, we take samples from the environment, extract the DNA from all of the species um, at the same time, and then um, sequence them and analyze them. Normally, these metagenomic samples are quite big, so it can be in the terabyte range. Um, for example, we can then assemble them into context. We still end up with hundreds of gigabytes, and we can start um, asking questions about these environments. And normally we do that by we answering them by, by searching them against certain databases. For example, we can search against reference genomes, and that helps us to determine who is in the community, so what kind of species are actually there. We can search with profiles against structural databases or domain databases um, and can figure out what do these proteins actually do um, and what these microbes, what kind of functionality do they have. Or we can search against um, met metabolic pathway databases um, and figure out what, how, how does these microbes actually do these kind of functionality. And one problem here is that everything is based on search and you have to find something in order to get, um, to get value out of these metagenomes. And for environmental data, for some of these metagenomes, we can barely annotate any of these open reading frames from these contexts. And normally what we do when we search, we search on the protein level. We do like sequence sequence comparisons because we can do that really fast. And there are different kinds of levels of, of difficulty how we can find homology. Um, so here on the x-axis you can see sequence identity. And the first bucket, that is the daylight zone. Daylight zone goes from 100 percent sequence identity similarity to below 40 percent and um, we can fairly confident align proteins on that level by just using purely amino acid sequences. The twilight zone is between 20 and like 35 percent um, sequence identity and for this we cannot just use normal sequence sequence comparisons anymore but instead we need profiles. Profiles are like protein families, meaning you represent not just a single sequence, but a family of, of sequences, and you turn these families into something called profiles and then align them against sequences. If you want to go in the midnight zone, which is below 20% sequence identity, you're actually requiring profiles on both sides. So one method that is um, fairly popular for profile profile searches is HHBlitz. And um, here you can see two plots. On the left side, it's a sensitivity plot, and on the right side is a speed plot of HHBlitz compared um, to Psyblast and Hammer. And what you can see in the sensitivity plot, so this is plotted for like one iteration, two iterations, three iterations. And um, you can see that HHBlitz is actually a bit more sensitive than, than um, Psyblast and Hammer. And what really matters for these kind of searches, or especially metagenomic annotation, is the first iteration. You have to be very, very sensitive in the first iteration. Um, if you don't find any hits in the first iteration, then second and third iteration doesn't help you anymore, because you're relying on the information you found on the first iteration of a search. So from speed-wise, HHBlitz is it's fast. Um, it's, it's faster than Psyblast and Hammer by maybe in order of magnitude or so, but it's still not really fast enough for a metagenomic scale. Okay, let's talk about what makes HHBlitz actually sensitive and fast. I try to break it down into three main ideas. The first one is context-specific pseudocounts. So when you start with a normal protein sequence, then the best thing you actually can do initially is to use a substitution matrix like Blossom62 and for each amino acid you can imagine a substitution vector coming from that matrix. But this doesn't really reflect how proteins work because proteins have different kind of substitution probabilities per residue position. So what HHBlitz does with these context-specific profiles, it tries to estimate how, the, how a profile actually might look like for a sequence. So in this example here you can see that some prolines here on the left side are down-regulated, while on the right side some prolines, for example, got up-regulated. So it gives some more 
some more diversity into these um, profiles. And it does it by looking at amino acid context of 13 residues and trying to predict the middle position of that of that um, window and estimate how, how, how these distributions might look like. Another idea are iterative searches. So HHSplit starts with a query sequence. It searches against a profile database, a um, pre-computed profile database. Then it accepts HMMs that have a good enough e-value. And then the query sequence turns into a hidden Markov model and you search that hidden Markov model again in that target database. And you do it iteratively until you cannot find any new homologs. Um, so this is a really powerful idea to find really far away hits, but it's really important that in the first iteration you actually find something in that database. And the third idea to be really fast is HHBlitz has a fast pre-filter which discretizes um, profile columns, meaning that you're actually searching through strings against strings, um, but instead of having an alphabet of size 20 for amino acids, you have an alphabet of size 219, which are discrete um, profile states. HHBlitz actually proves to be quite useful for metagenomic data. Kyra Rani et al. tried to annotate proteins from metagenomes by first clustering them with MMSeqs and then annotating them against the UNIRF90 and NCBI and R using sequence sequence search. And every cluster that could not be annotated by MM6 was then given to HHBlitz and HHBlitz tried to find um, homologs in the UNIQLUST database and was able to annotate additional 60% of these clusters without annotation. However, this was at a great cost of computation and they needed a cluster to run this analysis, so it's not really possible to scale this in small labs. So this brings us to the project MM6.2, where we try to push MM6 in the direction of HHBlitz to, to perform these kind of very sensitive searches. And this work is led by Hayden Yunju G and Milut Medita. So let's start with the benchmark. We find a benchmark set first, where we take the UNIREF 100 and we annotate it with SCOP25 domains. So SCOP25 is a redundancy reduced set of the SCOP domains. And then we ended up with proteins that have annotations and proteins do not have annotations. The ones that do not have annotations are false positives and we revert these sequences. The ones that have annotations are true positive. And we pick a set of queries from this UNIREF 100 that represents these scope domains very well. And then we then search these query sequences in the set and remove everything that is in, in a radius of greater 20% sequence identity. We do that because we want to make it really difficult for queries to find hits in that database. And then we turn it into databases. One are the sequence databases, which, is, which we give sequence search tools. And the other is a clustered database, which give the profile-based tools like MM6.2 and HHBlitz. And we measured the sensitivity um, using this data and the speed. And we ended up actually with a quite surprising um, result. And um, we achieved that MM6 can be as sensitive as, as HHBlitz, while sequence-based search methods are all performing fairly similar, aside from Hammer. And um, Hammer is, is more sensitive. But um, the other sequence-based sequence methods have a really hard time to align, align the sequences, which makes sense, right? Because we have pruned away everything that is like a close relative to, to the query. So let's talk a bit about how we made MM6 that fast and sensitive for the first iteration. So before we talk about it, we have to understand how MM6 filters things. And it uses a filtering strategy where it uses a K-mirror-based pre-filter. It tries to find double K-mirror hits on a diagonal. If it finds them, it makes an ungapped alignment. And if that ungapped alignment score is big enough, it follows with a gapped alignment. That is like constantly decreasing the size of, of sequences that has to be processed by each stage because um, each stage becomes slower and slower over time. Yeah, we have optimized everything with AVX and SIMP so to make it really fast, um, but still the, the, the speed of the KMAP prefilter is still much faster than the Swiss Waterman at the end. And yeah, we take a set of query sequences or profiles and we process them by going in a sliding window with cameras over that sequence or profile, and then we generate similar cameras at each position and search them against a pre-computed index table, which is just the target sequences index, and try to find these double diagonal hits. So this is what our like first stage looks like for the search. 
for this work here, one thing we just did is we, instead of searching the query sequences against um, target profiles, we put the target profile on the query side because that's where we generate the similar k-mers and we keep the query sequences on the target side, so like in the index table. So we do that search and after we have done that search and have done the alignment and so on, we just swap the results. So just swap the directionality of it, which is also like some kind of reverse profile search, um, similar what RP, RPS Blast did. We also improved the profiles of MN62 by applying context-specific pseudocounts to them. We took the implementation of HHBlitz and implemented it in MM62. While doing so, we made it 10 times faster because this computation takes some time. But a more important step is, in comparison to HHBlitz, MM6 applies the pseudocounts to every profile of the target database. HHBlitz just does it on the query. The advantage of this is that by having more targets with a higher quality, you're being more sensitive. And another one is that during the search, you actually do not have to compute the context-specific pseudocounts, which can be still quite expensive, even though it's 10 times faster. By implementing the reverse profile search in combination with the improved profiles, we actually achieve this step where the first iteration is nearly as sensitive as HHSplits after three iterations. However, we also implemented an iterative search workflow into MM6. So as described before, as a first search, we search the cluster target database against the query sequences. Then we accept all of these hits we swap the results and then have an evolving query profile. This evolving query profile is now searched against the cluster target database and you accept more profiles. You add these homologs to your, to your profiles and do that iteratively. And to do so, to actually do the alignment between the query profile and the target database, we, we needed to improve our Swiss Waterman algorithm to implement actually a profile profile alignment. MM6 uses Faraz SIMT implementation for the go to Swiss Waterman alignment. It was not intended to work with profile profiles, so we had to come up with our own scoring function S here in that formula that, can, that takes two profile columns and combines them into one score. Our idea here was to take the maximum column, for example here that F, and look up the F score in the, in the second column and do the same thing vice versa. So then you end up with 7 and 10 and you just take the average of that and that's the profile profile score. Actually this very simple formula can be implemented very efficiently in SIMT um, and also improves the performance. To wrap up, MM62 profile um, is a really sensitive tool. It should help to reduce that problem to annotate ORFs. Key, key ideas here is like we have a fast algorithm to perform reverse profile searches. We integrated context-specific pseudocounts in a way so that they do not harm um, speed but still give us sensitivity. And we have built a fast, simple, optimized profile-profile alignment um, which um, enables this iterative search. The outlook for that, what, where are we going from now? Yeah, we are trying to turn these profiles actually in real or like kind of like real HMMs and um, to further improve the alignment quality and um, sensitivity. And with this, I want to thank Milut Meditita, Hayden, Eli, Johannes, and Clovis for working on that. And um, I want to also acknowledge the funders and thank you for listening.